Hi, this is Tawny with the Kinsman Free Public Library, and today's book recommendation is A Sentence of a Bookworm, I'll Do Anything to Become a Librarian, Part 1, Daughter of a Soldier, Volume 1, by Mia Kazuki and the illustrations by Yushina. I am sure I butchered those, as this is a Japanese written novel originally, and my Japanese is non-existent. But, A Sentence of a Bookworm is fantastic. Like it says, it is about someone who will do anything to become a librarian. Except instead of following our usual route where you try really, really hard to work in a library and you read a whole bunch of books, Orana, Orano, Motosu, oof, that was rough, is not only already a librarian in her current Japan, but she is dead, <laughs> which is a totally grim way to start this book. But Arana Motosu is a recent college graduate who lands her dream job in a college library. Her college is library. She couldn't have gotten any luckier until an earthquake hits Japan and she gets crushed under her mountain of books. That's right, she went out in the most stereotypical way a librarian or book lover could go out, crushed by their own books. <laughs> now, in the first, in the prologue, she discusses how she really shouldn't have died that way. The earthquake wasn't that bad. She just had so many books, and they were so precariously stacked in her house that they were, it was doomed to happen. <laughs> she just figured she had a few more years before she died that way. So... Orano wakes up after dying in a totally different setting. She can hear a little ch a child's voice in the back of her head talking about being hot, not feeling well, and really not enjoying the sensation. And as she starts to wake up a little bit more, these sensations she starts to realize are her own, and she agrees that this is awful. And then as she slowly wakes up and recovers from the fever, she starts to realize she's not Arano anymore. In fact, she's not even in Japan. You see, Ascendance of a Bookworm is something called an isekai, or basically, the main character gets transported to another world. In this case, a 20-something-year-old woman gets transformed into a six-year-old girl in a fantasy medieval setting where there are no books. That's right, our book-obsessed librarian can no longer read books. She is completely without them, and when she wakes up and asks for a book, her family is bewildered. A book? We, we have never had books. And this sets her off on her mission to find a book, because if she could just read one book, she could survive this. And that is where the story takes off. It follows Orano, now known as mine, and her adventures in creating a book. The story, it's very wholesome, very light, but at the same time, there's a real grit and meat to it as it discusses poverty and the difference between nobility and the lower classes, whether it's mine's own family whose parents are a soldier and a seamstress respectively, or the merchant class, who are almost more like the middle class. It d covers all topics, not just that, but education. It, it, there's a lot of fantastic world building in this story. Not to mention, it's also cur a current running anime, which is absolutely delightful too. The, it completely brings the story alive. But we're not here to talk about the anime, although I could talk to you about that forever. So that is Ascendance of the Bookworm. I'm going to give you a quick preview of it just so you can get a gist of what it sounds like. Orana Motosu loved books, psychology, religion, history, geography, education, anthropology, math, physics, geology, chemistry, biology, art, language, fiction, books were filled with the knowledge of all humanity, and she loved them from the bottom of her heart. She felt rewarded whenever she read a book, packed with facts and trivia new to her, 
looking upon worlds unbeknownst to her through maps and pictures and picture anthologies made her feel into the intoxicating bliss of her world expanding. She was even interested in old tales and myths from foreign countries, as she felt like they gave her a glimpse into different cultures of ages long past. They were rich with history, and she couldn't count on many how many hours she had lost to unraveling their mysteries. Orana loved the distinctive scent of old books packed into the storeroom of a library, and even the dusty air enticed her so much that she would always head straight for the back rooms of whichever libraries she visited. She would slowly fill her lungs with the old musty smell and look over the aged books, feeling elated from that alone. Of course, she also loved the smell of new paper and ink. She had fun just wondering about what would be written on those pages. What new information awaited her? Above all, Orano just didn't feel right when her eyes weren't scanning the line of a book. In order to survive, she always kept the book close at hand. Whether she was taking a bath, using the bathroom, or even just walking around, she had lived this way from childhood to her college graduation. Clinging to books with such a fervor that everyone who knew Arana called her that weird bookworm. They said that she loved books so much it was damaging her life, but Arano didn't care. No matter what they said, she had books and that was enough to make her happy. A large truck passed in front of Arano, spewing the smell of exhaust behind it. The warm wind flew past her, rustling her bangs, but she paid them no mind. All she cared about was hurriedly holding down the pages of her book before she flipped, and she lost her place. Arano, come on. That's dangerous. Stay close to me. Hmm? Arano pushed up her glasses and gave a lazy response, focusing more on the words in front of her. She noticed that her rustled hair was getting in the way and quickly brushed it aside. An exasperated sigh drifted into her ears and she felt someone pull on her arm, a little hard. Her brows furrowed, shush, shoo, that hurts. Complain all you want. A little pain is a lot better than getting hick, hit by a truck and die, yeah? That's true, I wouldn't want to die from anything but an avalanche of books. So as you can see, she set up as being this very book-obsessed individual. And her struggle through this new world is even highlighted, as well as her death in those few quick pages. It's, unfortunately, it is a little stereotype heavy. As somebody who works in libraries, we're not all... While we all love books, that's not our main purpose in being a librarian. So I wished it would expand upon that and not make her so book driven, but rather also people driven than she does appear in the book. She is very purpose driven. She's only got one thing on her mind and that is finding a book or making a book or getting her hands on a book. And she doesn't really seem to take into account everything that's going on around her at all times during this mission. She tends to skip over and not pay any attention to the world or trying to fit in. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So that gets her into some trouble and some really funny situations. So please give this book a shot. Give this whole series a shot. It is available on Libby and Overdrive, all three volumes of the first part. And you can stream seasons one and two on Verve or Crunchyroll if you have an account. Thanks for listening.